The Two Cat Witches Dedicated to Elisa and Hazel Hello, this is Natasha and I'm here with a story from Wales. In old days, it was believed that the seventh son in a family of sons was a conjurer by nature and that he could work wonders like the fairies and cure diseases better than any doctor. If he were the seventh son of a seventh son, he was himself a wonder of wonders. There was always great rivalry between these conjurers and the monks who made money from the pilgrims at Holy Wells. But a fellow called Hugh, a great conjurer, kept on friendly terms with the monks. They often ate dinner together, for Hugh was a great traveller over the whole country and always had news to tell to the holy brothers who lived in the cells, particularly about his adventures outwitting robbers. One night as he was eating supper at an inn, four men came in and sat down at the table with him. By his magical powers, Hugh knew that they were robbers and meant to kill him that night in order to get his money. So to divert their attention, Hugh made a statue of a beautiful woman grow up out of the centre of the table and then he laid a spell on the robbers so that they kept gazing at the curious lady all night long while he went to bed and slept soundly. When he rose in the morning, he paid his bill and went away while the robbers were still gazing at the statue. Now, at Betsy Coit, there was a hotel named the Inn of Three Kegs. The shop sign hung out in the front. It was a bunch of grapes set below three small barrels. This inn was kept by two sisters. In that very hotel, several travellers, while they were asleep, had been robbed of their money. They could not blame anyone nor tell how the mischief was done. They had kept their doors locked during the night with the keys in the keyholes. They were sure no one had entered their rooms. There were no signs of men's boots or of anyone's footsteps in the garden, while nothing was visible on the lock or door to show that either had been tampered with. Everything was in order as when they went to bed. Some people doubted their stories, but Hugh the conjurer believed them and was determined to solve the mystery. When Hugh arrived one night at the inn, they all chatted together merrily. Hugh, who was always ready with a good story, told the two sisters about the various kinds of people and the many countries he had visited. All the vivid stories came from his imagination, for he had never set foot outside of Wales. When he was ready to go to bed, he said to the ladies, I like to keep a light burning in my room all night, but I will not ask for candles, for I have enough to last me until sunrise. So saying, he bade them good night. He entered his room and locked the door, undressed and laid his clothes near at hand. He drew his trusty sword out of its sheath and laid it upon the bed beside him, where he could quickly grasp it. Then he pretended to be asleep and even snored. It was not long before peeping between his eyelids, only half closed, he saw two cats come stealthily down the chimney. When in the room, the animals frisked about and then gambled and romped in the most lively way. Then they chased each other around the bed as if they were trying to find out whether Hugh was asleep. Meanwhile, the supposed sleeper kept perfectly still. Soon, the two cats came over to his clothes and one of them put her paw into the pocket that contained his purse. At this, with one sweep of his sword, Hugh struck at the cat's paw. The beast howled frightfully and both animals ran for the chimney and disappeared. After that, everything was quiet until breakfast time. At the table, only one of the sisters was present. Hugh politely inquired after the other one. He was told that she was not well, for which Hugh said he was very sorry. 
After the meal, Hugh declared he must say goodbye to both the sisters, whose company he had so enjoyed the night before. In spite of the other lady's many excuses, he was admitted to the sick lady's room. Hugh offered his hand to say goodbye. The sick lady smiled at once and put out her hand, but it was her left one. Oh, no, <laughs> said Hugh with a laugh. I never in all my life have taken anyone's left hand, and, as beautiful as yours is, I won't break my habit by beginning now and here. Reluctantly, as if in pain, the sick lady put out her hand. It was bandaged. The mystery now cleared up. The two sisters were cats. By the help of bad fairies, they had changed their forms and were the real robbers. Hugh seized the hand of the other sister and made a little cut in it, from which a few drops of blood flowed. But the spell was over. Henceforth, said Hugh, you are both harmless and I trust you will both be honest women. And they were. From that day, they were like other women, neither as cats with paws nor landladies with soaring bills did they ever rob travellers again. My, that really was a catty story. And I'm delighted to dedicate this story to Elisa and Hazel, who live in Mornington Peninsula, Australia. Their mum, Gwen Judy Chi, writes, Hi Bertie, I'm so happy we stumbled across Story Nori. And Dad searched for a story podcast and bingo, he hit the jackpot. Elisa is in love with a witch's fly song and Hazel loves the boy who likes to draw cats and is intrigued by the announcement of the samurai and the tea master. Well, thank you Elisa and Hazel for supporting us on Patreon. I do hope you enjoy this story. For now, from me, Natasha, bye-bye.